Broccolis with Hats, Part 6, Patricide and Other Fun Family Outings, Part 1, by Cheerios, read by My Lost and Found. Summary, Momo, plants are basically the ideal friends. They're quiet, friendly, and easy to please. All they need is a little water and fresh earth, and they're perfectly happy to lie there all day in the sun. And they don't make increasingly, and they don't make increasingly awful life choices or hide bodies. They have never, as far as I know, killed a villain without hesitation. No, Ida said firmly. Ida, no, he yelled. No way, we are not going to get Bakugo. Even Todoroki looked mildly hesitant features illuminated in the light outside of the hospital. They were standing there, Yagirozu glancing between the two nervously, while Kirishima had a hand reaching out, ready to stop the fight. Todoroki's face smoothed, erasing any hesitance as he eyed the other two with pity. They had no idea how bad this mission could go. Todoroki was sure they'd rescue Bakugo if they went but he was also sure that Midori would find a way to kill someone in the process, and he wasn't exactly jumping to have his sweet best friend go to jail for a little murder. Midoriya pouted, eyes narrowing with determination, while Ida's face paled, obviously recognizing the beginnings of what they'd, almost, jokingly begun referring to as Midoriya's murder face. He paused when, instead of an unhinged smile, he was met with, with, that's not going to work, Ida warned without much weight behind his words. What's not going to work? Yagirozu went to ask Todoroki, turning to face him. Unfortunately for her, his eyes were firmly on Midoriya, his expression something she could only describe as bestoddled. I don't know, Kirishima answered her instead, leaning in conspiratorially. Midoriya's eyes had widened demurely, a sheen to them that made them sparkle. He'd managed to make himself more assuming yet less dangerous than he already was, which is to say, on a normal basis, no one would ever suspect this man of killing bugs. And now he seemed like the type of person who'd sing with birds and end global warming just by existing. Stop! Ida sighed, nearly begging his friend. His green eyes widened even further, sort of ruining the effect and making him look more bug-eyed than convincing. Ida's expression soured a bit more, though Todoroki's insisting glare made his own brows stop from furrowing more than they already had. It wasn't going to work, though. It wasn't. I am not going. I hate you. Ida said tiredly, eyeing his feet as they trudged through busy streets. Do you want a mustache? Midoriya asked from where he was sifting through a sail bucket at the open-walled section hand place they'd stopped at, not paying attention to Ida's pain, much to Kirishima and Yagirozu's surprise. Um, Mirabro, I want to go home. Ida responded over Kirishima, reluctantly parsing through a few fake mustaches. I'll wear a mustache, Todoroki offered Midoriya, eyes glinting with the brightest streetlights, giving him the illusion of more emotional expression than was normal. If you want me to. Midoriya frowned thoughtfully. No, he said finally. It'd suck if we had to cover more of your face. He tucked a bit of white hair under the black wig. Todoroki let his own hand drift up to touch the edges of his scar, where the wig hadn't managed to cover it. His expression tightened, something Midoriya did not miss, accurately guessing the direction his thoughts were headed in. He knocked away Todoroki's long fingers with his own twisted right hand. His fingers, never quite having set right after breaking again and again, gently, reverently, slid across the burned skin. You always look perfect, 
Midori responded with a light tone, too light for the groundbreaking effect it had on Todoroki. Midoriya hadn't necessarily been thinking about what he was saying, focused more on the mission than his thought-to-speech filter. If he had, he might not have said anything. While Midoriya had turned away in time, Kirishima had been looking in Todoroki's direction, so we saw the exact moment his pale face blushed vibrantly and his hand touched the place where Midoriya's fingers had brushed his skin. Kirishima then turned away, without saying a word, because having a crush was manly, and embarrassing friends was not. This meant that he didn't see the moment Yayorozu realize why Todoroki's face was red, nor did he see the somewhat crestfallen expression on her face, or the soft, slightly saddened smile that grew afterwards. In the end, only Ida ended up with a mustache, though Midoriya did leave a goatee plastered to his face with cosmetic glue. While Midoriya finished getting the goatee adhered to his face, he turned to offer the glue to Ida. There was... cosmetic glue? Ida muttered with his eyes pinched in regret over something. Kirishima reached over to pat his shoulder comfortingly. I'm sure it's fine, he assured Ida apparently having been the one to help Ida get his mustache on. Midoriya did not know what Ida had used to get the mustache on, but apparently, Yayurozu knew what they were talking about because she promised to help him with it afterwards. By the time they'd finished dressing, they looked like they wouldn't have been out of place in a casino. Except, perhaps, for Kirishima, who probably could have still passed for a teenager if he tried. The resulting look was... Interesting, and mildly counterintuitive, Kirishima noticed. They were attracting more attention than before, but it didn't seem likely that anyone would approach them. Actually, now that he was looking, it seemed almost like there was an unspoken bubble lingering around their group. He exchanged a glance with Yayurozu, who also seemed to have noticed this. Shockingly enough, to the two of them, it seemed that Ida, Todoroki, and Midoriya hadn't yet caught on to the extra attention. They seemed used to it. Weird. They walked through the streets, wading through the thickest part of the crowd as they followed Yayurozu's tracker. The closer they got to the center of Kamino Ward, however, the longer the shadows on the street stretched. Kirishima wandered closer to the group, so he wasn't quite at the back. Yayurozu and Ida moved to the sides of the group, so they were nearly stumbling over each other's feet down the alleyway. Their breaths puffed out visibly into the night air. The warehouse they'd stumbled upon felt crackling with unseen energy gleaming below the surface. Yayurozu stepped closer to scan for a window, but the only one she could find were too high up for any of them to easily see through. "'I think,' she whispered, then winced at the way her voice broke the delicate silence. She took a calming breath. I think we have to figure out how to get one of the top windows. There's no way to see anything from here. Ida eyed the wall and the distance. I could probably dash up, but... Kirishima nodded. Way too noisy. They stood, pressed up a little too tightly between the alley's walls, in momentary silence. No one wanted to turn back just yet to find another path around. Likely because they worried they'd lose their nerve if they waited any longer. Midoriya gasped, suddenly and quietly, breaking the desperate silence, hitting his fists into the palm of his other hand. Have you heard of chicken? Shuffling around in the small space of the alleyway, five minutes later they found themselves able to see through the windows. It was fine. It was, until... Todoroki, is something wrong? whispered Kirishima from atop Ida's shoulders. More than a little panicked, he didn't see anything in the warehouse, after all. Todoroki attempted to stifle the curling smoke and small embers of fire that threatened to break past his normally composed demeanor. It was easy to forget how strong Midoriya was with how short and small he seemed under his baggy clothing. 
Todoroki certainly never would have guessed he could bench a car without his quirk unless he'd seen it himself. It was honestly the hottest thing he'd ever witnessed in his life. But from where he was sitting on those deceptively broad shoulders, it was obvious. He tried to ignore it and will away his blush. It was hard, though, when Midorio worriedly tightened his hold on Todoroki's thighs in retaliation to Kirishima's comment. His ears burned. I'm... He cleared his throat briefly. I'm fine. Midoriya squeezed his right thigh in a move Todoroki thought was meant to comfort him. Are you sure? Yagirozu covered her mouth with her hand. The seriousness of the situation seemed to dissipate for just a moment because, well, a composed Todoroki was like a perfectly chiseled sculpture. Beautiful, unbreakable. A flustered Todoroki was almost... Almost, she re reassured herself, as it was rude to think embarrassing things about her peers. Cute. Ida broke the lightness in his air, with his put-upon sigh. Is there anything there? He asked, directing the group's wayward attention back to the situation. Kirishima frowned. No, nothing's there. Yagirozu felt bad when she saw Midoriya's crestfallen expression but she couldn't hide her gasp of relief. Todoroki himself was exhaling a long, icy breath at the lack of danger. Well, we can't do anything if they aren't. The earth exploded beneath them. In the background of the chaos, they could hear Kamino stirring. The district hadn't yet settled, so civilians must have heard the explosion. Kirishima gasped in sudden, gripping terror. Yagirozu's eyes widened in confusion and fear. And yes, Ida supposed that it was scary. But the real nightmare? He wanted to scream. The real nightmare, Todoroki considered, wasn't the explosion. Nor was it Shigaraki's rasping voice entering the commotion. Midoriya's lips twitched once, twice, three times. But what dawned on his face wasn't the All Might's signature beaming grin, or his sly, blank smile that screamed, Danger, 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 danger. On Deku's face was a wide and toothy, too many teeth grin. His green eyes burned like acid in the smoke-filled air, and the world trembled. Ooh hoo hoo! There's bound to be some chaos next chapter, or next part, because this is like parts in the series, but it's been a while since I've read this, so I don't actually remember what happens, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I hope you're excited, but you, you gotta wait a little bit till the next one. <laughs>